Do you need math to be a programmer? One of the age-old questions of program kind. It seems that people are afraid of many things like, like death, like being alone forever, and math for many people definitely makes that cut. There's just something about the word math that when people hear it, it just makes them lose their shit. What are you doing here? I thought I was done with you in high school. High school. Go back to the depths of hell, you vile beast. You shall not pass! Okay, that might not be your typical reaction, but you know what I mean. So what's the answer to the question? Well, the answer is, it depends. Keep watching to find out why. So, first of all, just a brief introduction on my background, just so you know where I'm coming from. I have an undergraduate degree in computer science and a master's degree in artificial intelligence. So, of course, I had my math learning during high school, I had my GCs, I went to university and I did the maths that computer scientists need to know, things like discrete maths, which to this day I really don't know what discrete maths mean. It's, it's like a, a weird term for something that no one really understands. And I even had to study some math and statistics on the side before my master's and in different places during my degree to fill in the gaps I had in my knowledge. So when it comes to software development or programming that most people think about, stuff like creating scripts, creating mobile applications, making web apps using Django or Angular or stuff like that, solving algorithm problems or data structure problems, or just generally making packages of software, you don't really need much math for that. So the most you would need is basically some basic operations, some basic calculus, some basic algebra, and basically the ability to be able to calculate like some numbers or like in increment counters or add numbers together, stuff like that. It's like quite simple mathematics. So you won't find yourself very often in like a corner where it's like, oh, I have to solve this integral equation, otherwise I can't deploy my Python app. Unless the Python app's job is just to solve an integral equation, then you would probably need to do that first before you deploy it. So what you would need in those situations is basically some basic problem solving skills, which you could get from math, or you could also get from many other principles like programming or many other backgrounds. There's people coming from different backgrounds into coding, like physics or maths, or even non-quantitative fields, and they're just fine after they pick up the basic programming things. The most important thing is to basically have a programming mindset and be able to think in code or like algorithmically and sequentially, and then you can solve all of problems. But having the knowledge of things like advanced mathematics or number theory, those are just a big overkill. You're never gonna use that in programming. And it might help in other ways, but don't think you need to have a university degree in mathematics to be able to write programs. So if you wanna be a generic software developer, then you don't have to study that much math you're fine, you can write your code, and you're not gonna have any issues. Worst case, if you need to find a formula somewhere, you'll just Google it and then you'll just code it, that's it. Now, before you leave and you're like, oh, Andrea said you don't need any math to be a programmer, just wait. Even though the fields I previously mentioned, you don't need much math, there are some fields in computer science or programming where you do need to have math, and in some cases, you need to have a lot of math. For example, if you want to work in computer vision or computer graphics, you need to have a good understanding of linear algebra. And that comes from experience. During my third year of university, I chose this module called computer graphics because I thought it would be something that would help me design better graphics on my computer. Because as some of you might know, I used to be a filmmaker and I like to think I still am on occasion. And I used to do a lot of visual effects and 3D modeling and stuff like that. So I was interested in 3D software and used them to make animations and everything. But computer graphics is not the creative side of things like I thought. Computer graphics is basically you learn how to create everything that renders that graphics. So when I started that module in the university, after the first one or two lessons, I was completely lost. I was like, I don't know what's happening here. This is way too much math, I don't know. And the problem is during the first and second year of university, we were only taught a few lectures on the linear algebra, but that was it. There wasn't like a full linear algebra course to learn everything properly, like there is one online in MIT. But anyway, because I didn't really have 
those foundations, when the vectors and the matrices started coming in, I was completely lost. And when I was trying to like manipulate the vector, I was like, I don't even know what the fucking vector is. Because even if you do it at the GCs, they don't probably explain to you what linear algebra is. You just like learn to solve some equations and to pass the exam, but you don't really understand what's happening. So I really struggled during that course. And I had to spend a lot of time like looking around and asking people in order to understand what's happening to solve the coursework. And I finally got it at the end. I kind of understood how it works and how the math works and why we're doing what we're doing. But it was a very painful journey. And if I would do it again, which I wouldn't, I would learn good math, specifically linear algebra first before I attempt the course. And the reason why you need linear algebra in computer graphics or computer vision is that you're handling data of multiple dimensions. And the easiest way to do that is to express them in matrix form. So if you want to be working in imaging or with computer graphics, especially computer graphics, you need to know some linear algebra and then you can make your ray tracer, your light functions, your shadows and stuff like that. But you do need to understand the math behind it. And of course, another field where you really have to have good math is machine learning and AI. And machine learning is one of the weird ones. I swear, like most of my master's degree, I really felt that I was doing more math than I was doing computer science. And many times I thought maybe, you know, if I was a math major, that would help me more than just being a computer scientist. Because to be properly good at machine learning, you don't only have to have decent programming skills, but you also have to have good linear algebra, good calculus, and good statistics knowledge. And that's why it's a difficult field to get into properly. Now you could still go and use a lot of machine learning libraries without really knowing the math and without probably understanding how they work. And you can get stuff done. But if you really want to understand what's happening or if you want to do research in the field, you have to learn the math and the statistics. Otherwise, you're just a kid playing around with algorithms and cat and dog classifiers. And don't get me wrong, I see a lot of people doing that and that's fine because you're still learning different things. You know how to apply the models and you get results. So it's kind of like having a black box. But for many people without the background, it's like they can follow a tutorial or they can do something and play with the hyperparameters of the models. But when shit hits the fan, they really don't know what to do or how to solve the problem because they don't actually understand what's happening. And again, when I was doing my master's, as I previously mentioned, before I went to the university, I studied linear algebra on my own in the summer because I thought that would help me. But when we started university, we had this module called Math for Machine Learning, which I expected would teach us the basic math for machine learning. And that was another course I really had trouble with. So the first lecture was like really slow, really gradual. You do like some basic vectors, some basic matrix properties. And then right after an hour of the lecture, right after the break, you just jump to like calculating derivatives with matrices or multi-dimensional statistics and covariance matrices. And then they will give you this like huge equation to like decompose and find the eigenvectors and show that the matrix is like positive and semi-definite. And then you did like a bunch of linear regression with kernels and a bunch of like complex stuff that you never saw in your life. So it was like everything thrown at your face at once. And I realized that once again, the reason I struggled is that my linear algebra wasn't that strong. So you could say linear algebra screwed me over like twice in my academic life. And if I really had like proper knowledge of it, that would go a long way. And especially during that course, that was probably the first time in my life I was kind of worried I wouldn't make it past the course. But thankfully I put the time in and I asked a bunch of questions. And I had a friend who was really smart and helped me out with this. Thanks a lot, Patrick, you know who you are. So I managed to make it past the course and actually understand everything properly by the time we had the exam. And the best part of all this is that once I finally understood what I was doing, like the math and the statistics, it was actually the first time in my life where I understood why I'm learning these things and why it's cool and interesting. Because when you're learning math and statistics in high school or in your GCs, you don't really understand how you can use them in the world. Once you put them in a machine learning context where you can actually code your little random variables and your regressions and your gradient descents and you see like the numbers make sense in front of you, it's like you unlocked the matrix and you can just see it. You can see why it works and what's happening. And it's a very beautiful thing. Unless I'm just a geek now and I really don't know it. So to summarize, if you just want to be a programmer, you don't need to have much math. If you want to work in cybersecurity or developing software packages, writing scripts, you don't need to know much math, but make sure you have the problem solving skills and the logical sequence of how you write code in your mind. Generally, at least for me, what I noticed is that for the coolest areas of computer science, like machine learning, computer graphics, computer vision, which let me just get this out of here. I really don't like computer graphics because of the experience I had, but I do think it's a cool field. You need to learn some math and depending on which one you go, you have to learn different fields of math. And if you probably sit down and study these fields, you will understand why you need it. And look, at the end of the day, you don't have to be a math major, right? You don't need a whole degree in mathematics to be able to do this. You just need to know what you have to know for what you want to do. 
please hit the subscribe button below and click on the notifications bell to be updated when I'm making a new video. Now, I want to hear your opinions. Do you work in the software development industry? If yes, what do you do? Do you feel that if you had more math knowledge, it would benefit you in some way? Are you in any of the fields I mentioned, like machine learning or computer graphics? Do you find that you need math there? Let me know in the comment section below. Study your math homework or not, depending on what you're gonna do. And I will see you next time. Take care.